What is up? Welcome to another edition of Sacktown Movie Buffs. Once again, I'm Kier, and this is Jason, and today we are back reviewing a new film that is actually streaming on Netflix. Don't think it's in theaters, because Netflix usually doesn't allow that. Um, <laughs> so It did open in theaters uh, right around the same time as uh, Spider-Man, so that should oh. tell you what happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it lasted for about five minutes. And yeah. then it went to streaming on the 24th on Christmas Eve. Wasn't but it did actually like play in theaters, theaters for a week or two. Was it in all theaters or just like selected theaters, though? I mean, no, I think like... it was a wide release. I do I do think it was a wide release, um, except that it got just obliterated by everything else and and no one really noticed it. And then it was gone and then it was on streaming on the 24th. So pretty sure it was a wide release, though. So, Well, go figure. Well, yeah. so without further ado with that intro, I say we get right into it. Um, so the film we are actually referring to is going to be Don't Look Up, which is pretty much an all-star cast. Um, um, the major two people are going to be uh, Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio, basically. Uh, they're basically uh, scientists, and Jennifer Lawrence's character is basically studying uh, uh, space, I guess, if you will. And comes across uh, essentially uh, a comet, um, which initially it's we know it's a very large comet, um, and it's going at a, like a really really fast pace. Um, so she then basically uh, lets her superior know, who's actually uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, who's like kind of like the lead scientist, research developer, or whatever, if you will. Um, and they basically come to a conclusion that this comet is headed essentially straight for Earth, and it's so big that if it hits Earth, it basically is going to uh, basically decimate the entire planet, basically. So it's an end of the world movie, basically, in a, in a nutshell. Uh, which brings us to basically, uh, you know, the information gets out there. Um, and it's kind of hard to explain it without going into too much detail. But basically, all you need to know is basically it's an end of the world film. Um, and they basically are going around basically talking to like the president of the United States, like Meryl Streep and everybody that they can talk to that the world is coming to an end and nobody's really essentially taking them seriously at the beginning. And that's basically all you really need to know about the film. I don't need to go into too much details because I get too, too much into it. And you kind of get into exactly what's going to happen there. All you need to know is basically there's a comet that's headed for earth and it's basically going to decimate the planet unless something is done or stop the planet or destroy the asteroid itself. And that's basically what the rest of the movie is, is I'm basically going around trying to figure out different ways to basically stop the, the comet from hitting the earth. Um, it's a satire film. It's, it's a comedy. Um, and for my own interpretation, I don't know if you picked up on this, Jason, but I know I did. And uh, Elizabeth was watching it with me. My, my wife was watching it with me as well. And it kind of felt like a, a Although it's an end of the world film, it kind of to me felt like a like a like a COVID film <laughs> in some kind of way. <laughs> because because the reason why I say that is because it's very polarizing because basically there there's there's science that's telling them that this comet's like basically in a nutshell heading for Earth. And there's a group of people that are like, Oh my god, we need to do something about this right away. And then there's this other group of people that are basically completely like I don't trust science. I don't believe that this comet's coming to Earth. And you know, is there really a comet? <laughs> is there really a comet? And um, and so basically, the the movie is called "Don't Look Up" because um, people are saying, well, if you look up, you can see that there's something out in the sky that's heading this way. And there's the, another group of people that are saying, don't look up. Don't even look at it. You know what I mean? Don't even don't yeah. look up there. It's not know? real. It's not real. Yeah. Don't look at that. And that's, and that's why I kind of came to the conclusion that it reminded me it's yeah. a very like like uh, polarizing thing and it reminded me of COVID-19 because it's essentially how we've treated COVID-19. You have a group of people that are like, oh my God, we're all going to die on one angle. And then you have another group of people that are like, this COVID stuff's completely fake. I don't believe anything that the government tells me, anything these scientists. These scientists don't know what they're talking about. They're wrong. you know. And then you know, obviously you have a lot of people that are kind of more in the middle where they believe it, but they're not for sure how how deadly it's going to be kind of thing, situation. You know what I mean? And I think I, that's why I kind of picked up on that. And I remember watching, I was like, this kind of seems like like a satire for like COVID. 
19, you know what I mean? And, um, and Elizabeth was basically saying she was thinking the exact same thing as well. So just something I personally picked up on. Not sure if that's exactly what they were going for, but it's just something that I personally had noticed. So, um, but in a nutshell, I liked it. I didn't love it, uh, but I did like it. I thought it was, you know, it had some funny parts. I think it did what it had to do. But there have been so many movies about, like, comets coming to the Earth and, and that were even comedies. Like, I think, um, what was it, Sinking a Friend for the End of the World or something of that nature. It's almost oh, similar yeah. to that where a comet's coming to Earth and it's like, you know, there's only a couple days left before you know the world's supposed to end and that kind of stuff so it reminded me a lot of some of those other films that i've seen um about comets coming to earth there was another film that's even more recent that was similar as well it was like kind of the end of the world where something was coming to earth or something of that nature that reminded me of that also so i don't remember what it was but in any event um there have been definitely films in recent memory that deal with the same subject matter this one just has a lot bigger stars because it has like an all-star cast. I mean, like everybody and their grandma's in there. Like I said, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, Kate Blanchett, who was just another movie that we we're talking about. Um, uh, Jonah Hill, Tyler Perry. I mean, you. Could, I mean, the list goes on. Ron Perlman. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, Ariana Grande, who, whatever. <laughs> um, but you know, the list just goes on and on about the stars in this film. So it's got a lot of stars, and it seems like the kind of movie that like you know maybe was hoping to like you know be popular or more popular than what it was and maybe that's why it it eventually started off on widescreen release and then ended up on netflix because i guess people just weren't gravitated to it for whatever reason it seems like anyways so but overall i mean i liked it in general i, I liked it i thought it was good i didn't think it was great i didn't think there was anything like super special about it in my opinion but i did like it um uh, what was your thoughts jason I felt more or less the same, you know. I uh, I I liked it. I didn't love it. I think it could have been a lot better given the cast and the talent involved. Um, and I, I get what you're saying. I think I think that might have been accidental because I know from what I understand, it was it was written before COVID, but it was filmed during during COVID. So that was probably kind of a mixture. And what I've read about, I've read a lot about how it's. Um, it's actually supposed to be an allegory about climate change. You know what I mean? There's this thing out there that's going to eventually kill us all, but we'd all much rather, you know, distract ourselves with, you know, celebrity relationships and, and not really think about it and think, you know, that's, we don't have to worry about that. It's way down the line or whatever. Um, so I don't know if, honestly, I don't know if I hadn't read so much about that or, or, you know, experience COVID, I don't think if I, I would have honestly picked up on the allegory, I just thought it would have been about a comet hit, you know, headed for Earth, but who knows, because I had read all that stuff before I watched it, you know, so. Right. Um, but anyway, I, uh, you know, I liked it, I didn't love it, like I said, like, uh, it definitely, it definitely has some good, good, good elements, you know, I think Leonardo DiCaprio is really good in it, I think Jennifer Lawrence is really good in it. Um, it's not, as funny as I was hoping for. That's the um, thing. It's, 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 not, it's built it, as, a, as a comedy satire, if you will, but I don't remember laughing a yeah. lot. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, you know, um, I don't know. It, it's not a satire. It's not really super clever. I mean, like, it's got some good points in it. You know, like, I like the idea that, you know, like, I think my favorite parts of the movie were I, I really like Tyler Perry and uh, Kate Blanchett as, like, the the morning, the, like, the, the fluff news show hosts, I thought they were both really good in it, um, and I like the fact that, you know, here's, you know, two scientists who want to tell you that the world is about to end, and they stick them right at the end of the broadcast, you know what I mean, like, after, you know, they have to wait for, you know, the, the pop star right. who's, you know, getting her, you know, who, who's mending her relationship on, live on TV with, you know, her boyfriend, her celebrity boyfriend, and, you know, it's, you know, how nobody really wants to pay attention to the serious stuff. Like, I get that. It's, it's, and there's some, there's some good, funny, clever moments in there. But again, like, seems to be a theme, it's too long. It goes, like, almost two and a half hours. Um, I don't know if we needed two entirely set up and two, like, rescue attempts that don't pen out. You know what I mean? I don't know if we yeah, need yeah, both there, of those. There's a lot of rescue attempts. There's a lot of setup. There's a lot of, you know, it is, it's a long film for a subject that's, it's, 
I'm going to say, I don't want to dumb it down, but say somewhat simplistic in that we know that a comet's headed for Earth and what are we going to do about it? That, in a nutshell, is the film. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but there's all this other stuff that they, they have going on and they try to add in and whatever case may be. And I just feel like something gets lost um, when, you, when you're trying to do, cram all this story into a very simplistic kind of element. You know what I mean? Which didn't need to be two and a half hours long. I mean, really, that film could have been an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and it would have probably been about perfect. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, just yeah, yeah. Thought, my take. So, yeah, yeah. And I did, you know, there, there are parts about it I really like. Like, I think the ending was really well done. Um, I did like uh, Timothy Chalamet's character, too. He doesn't come in until very near the end, really, but I thought he yeah. added something yeah, he, he, to the yeah, film that was kind of him new. Was weird. Like, I feel like I never even knew who that kid was, and now he's in like four movies I've seen this year or something like that. Like, I just feel like he just kind of like showed up on my radar in the like the last year. You know, <laughs> it's like like he was like I'd never I didn't even know his name. I mean, I'd seen him in some things, but I didn't never knew his name. But then all of a sudden, he was like the lead star in like Dune, uh, the French uh, Dispatch, this and something else he was in recently too. Like it's been like four movies that I've seen in the last year, and I'm like this guy just kind of showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm having a couple of audio issues, but uh, I could hear most of what you were saying. Sorry. Yeah. No, no you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah well i mean anything else you want to add about don't look up never mind can you hear me okay it's probably not as good yeah. right now but you can hear yeah. me yeah i can hear you yeah okay sorry um uh, but i think you were talking about how timothy chalamet kind of came up out of nowhere and now he's in like every other movie that comes out right yeah yeah right yeah i concur that's exactly concur. right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um I was going to say yeah, was there anything else that you wanted to add about this one or Nope, nope. No. Okay. All right, overall grade and face you would give this one. Um uh, I would give this one uh 3 out of 5. Uh so just kind of a little bit over the middle way mark, you know, C plus B minus around there. Like, you know, it was. It had some great moments. It has a great cast, but it definitely could have been a lot, lot better, lot better. So that's kind of a, yeah. I, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going with the same grade. I'm actually going to give it a three out of five as well. Um, I liked a lot of elements of it. It just overall the whole sum of the film. It just overall, you know, with that that cast and the talent they had. I don't know. I guess I just expect a little more out of it is all. So um, I liked it. Didn't love it. Probably not a film I'm going to revisit necessarily, but I gave it a three out of, out of three out of five, you know, which I think is a fair grade for it. So it's just kind of basically, like I said, just like a, a smile, no teeth. Um, but like I said, overall, I liked it. Um, just, you know, I didn't think it was great. But, you know, as always, you know, let us know down in the comments. Did you like it? Uh, did you not like it? What are your thoughts, your take on Don't Look Up? And then if you like the channel, we do ask you like, subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification, and we'll be back again soon with another show for you guys. We thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.